afternoon, good evening all, it's Bear here. And I'd like to welcome you to my YouTube channel, A Box With No Lid. A channel I'm creating not only just to bring the awareness around the realities of complex trauma, but I really want to get into the understandings of its inner workings, the lived reality of it, and, its, and how we can work with its nuances to build a firm base to heal from and to improve the quality of our lives. Now, this is the next video in the adoption series, and I'm still going with, uh, you know, I'm going to do a couple more videos on the differences between cognitive and biological attachment in regards of how, from a cognitive base, we learn to connect. As I said in all videos around adoption in, and foster care, is our attachment is a survival script. The fundamental workings of that so that we can start to learn and the goal of this video is that there's two rivers within us of where things go from from our interactional inputs and it's finding the people that feed the right river the right flow so that we can develop and learn those people that come from the right understanding and base they give us the grace so that we can develop our own understandings of those missing pieces we can start to fill in the gaps of how we connect and how we interact so that we can be a better part of and the benefits of doing this are vast if we can get there it helps to appease our assigned fear base it helps to appease so many aspects of, of our threat responses and our trauma responses as a result of our childhood and any trauma we've experienced throughout our childhood, it helps with all of that because the heal attachment trauma we need to work on these gaps, these gaps that were created by not having a biological connection in the first place. So in this video, as I said pre uh, earlier, I wanted to get the, these two rivers. There's this idea that I have on how I can explain this. One of the difficulties we have when we're working with the fog, when we're working with the, the unique nature of an adoption or long-term foster care attachment and what that creates, this avatar that it creates, that we create to survive, is we need to separate the avatar and work on who we are inside the actual person that is being repressed for the majority if not all of our lives we need to start to access this person not this avatar and that's where having an understanding of what a cognitive attachment implies and especially when you're looking at it from a therapeutic standpoint you can start to focus on making sure that you're accessing this person not the avatar to do this we need to ourselves be aware of when we engage the avatar and when we're actively trying to or actively connecting to this person within us now i know from personal experience for the majority of adoptees who when we're still well and truly immersed in what we refer to as the fog or as a coping structure, we, we avoid at all costs trying to access that core person. But when our fog collapses or when we get older and our life gets to the point where we can no longer ignore it, we do it when we're by ourselves. We do it when we're triggered, when we do it when we're reminded of where we came from. And you can start to feel these two different people. We can start to differentiate the line between the learned avatar we created to survive and the person that has always been there, but we've had to repress or ignore. And it's up to us when we work with it to bring in this new information into the person that we are. A therapist cannot make us do it. There is no technique to force us to do it. This comes down to our own unique way of choosing to. And 
when we have that feeling, and it's going to be brief, and more often than not, it's it, it's going to be very hard in the beginning to, to really get. Until you develop a way of understanding how to filter what comes in. This is what I mean by these two rivers. There's one river that just throws things at us and we deal with it and we cope and we just respond. There's the other way we go, the nature of this is different. I can steer this to benefit me in the core person of who I am. I'm being given the grace to take my internal healing and awareness that fraction of a step further. And it's about that that second river is, is the pathway of our ability to actively engage without a requirement. With knowing that the people or situation is not going to perceive what we do or what we respond or how we respond as a threat. We're being given the grace, which I've said in numerous videos, we're given the grace to screw up without being perceived as being malice or there's no malicious intent behind our screw up we're allowed to play with how we connect we're allowed to make mistakes and those mistakes are seen as learning not as deliberate that's the river that to heal attachment and the river it, it, it's it's the easiest analogy i've got to work with because a river has many parts to its ecology and this has will have over multitudes of videos many parts of this ecology but if we can start to recognize the people and places in our lives that feed that part that give us that grace and then we can in gentle ways over a long period of time work to expand and fill those attachment gaps I have a very dear friend that I've asked some of the most awkward questions and she completely understands the base of where those awkward questions are coming from because I'm trying to get the understandings of how my actions are interpreted so I can learn the gaps because more often than not, out of my innocent side of things, people think that I have an interest in them that I don't. Where I am just trying to connect how a child will connect, which is open, honest, and complete, it is perceived as an interest that it's not. And it's gotten me in the hot water in the past to where I've gone, no, and I back off because I don't know what to do. I didn't, this is not what I was implying. I'm just trying to be part of the group. And I see this with a lot of adoptees that over the years in the circles, this learned behavior of how to control and create these filters in connection that always remind us that we're separate, negatively feeding our attachment trauma. And this is what I want to address to here. When we have these close friends, these people in our lives, and only be one or two or three, if you've got more than three, you're doing brilliantly, that have that river that we can learn to fill those biological gaps of attachment and connection. All the things that little kids, like if a little tiny kid, a three, you know, an 18 month old runs up to a complete stranger and latches onto the leg, looks up with the grinning eyes. There's no misinterpretation of that. That's innocent, it's awesome, and it's a connection. That it's wonderful that little kid felt safe enough to do that and drawn to do that. But if you run up to a stranger in a supermarket and do the exact same thing, you'll be arrested. This is the, the, the differences. When you take that very obvious and blatant example and put it to an internal process of desire and wants and connections and how we want to connect, but we're not allowed to, and all these little nuances of, I don't know what is right, I don't know what to do. When you get into a relational sense with friendships where they have that grace, they give us that grace, we can start to explore and ask those questions. Well, I don't know what to do, so what do you think? You know, where we can develop, where we're allowed to make the mistakes and where we're allowed to fill in these gaps that biologically would have been filled 
if we had a biological connection growing up. Two biological siblings sitting on a lounge arm in arm, there is no misinterpretation. It's a biological connection, a brother and sister or sister and sister, whatever. It's, it's a close family. It's admired. Two non-biological connected people doing that, there's other implications. There's other interpretations, and people project those interpretations. This is all these things that feed our attachment trauma because I know from myself and countless adoptees that I speak of, I've spoken to, and have spent time with over many, many years, we never say what bothers us. We never say that we are aware that these things are happening, but we are. And this is my hope through these videos to bring this awareness so that we can be given the grace to heal, but also understanding that we didn't create this, but also understanding what drives this and to bring this awareness so that in future with placements from foster care and adoption, there is a better understanding. And we can do this earlier when we're kids, not as adults, when we're trying to find the answers we are to why our lives are the way that they are. As always, I love your guys' comments and feedback. Please be mindful, safe and respectful. And I hope this makes sense. And I'll see you all next time.